Hello, my soccer universe. So two more champions have been crowned that, you know, if you're at that stage crowned, you know that it has been quite in the making. We are talking of Pauk in Greece, who won 5-0 against Levadia, cannot be overtaken anymore as the first championship since the mid-80s. So that has been a long wait. And we're talking, of course, Paris Saint-Germain who actually didn't need even to do anything today to become champions because Lille only managed a nil-nil and that sealed the deal. Uh, I saw just a few scenes from the PSG game, um, um, the third goal in particular. PSG played actually very interestingly. I mean, they had a big Notre Dame silhouette instead of the sponsor, which looked cool, and then all the player names were Notre Dame. I am sure they will auction off these shirts, which uh, will be special collector's item, I'm absolutely certain. But yeah, let's quickly check the final score on that game. 3-1 uh, actually only, and Lille nil, nil against Toulouse. So yeah, France is decided, Greece is decided. Uh, I actually didn't watch anything, any match in full live. I only saw the only live shots was, was the PSG game against Monaco and a little bit of, a really little bit of uh, Betis against Valencia. Um, because it was Easter, I was actually not too much into the games, although when I look now back, there were quite a few interesting ones, but actually we decided to take a long walk and I'm sore all over. But it was worth it to spend. We have a really nice weather at the moment, so it's worth spending that, that time outside. Um, I watched then Cardiff against Liverpool uh, delayed in, the, in, in its entirety because I thought this is... I'm really riveted by this championship race in England uh, this year, so that's why I think that Getafe uh, against Sevilla was probably the biggest matchup uh, today and then there was a classic matchup between Real Madrid and Bilbao. Getafe won 3-0 uh, against Sevilla, that's a pretty big result, two penalties uh, uh, won given by VAR, VAR, the other one, um, yeah, I think was not overturned by VAR, so yeah. We have to look into Getafe uh, being a force, also have in mind that now with Valencia uh, winning 2-1 at Betis, this also means that Valencia is just a few points behind um, Getafe and maybe we'll even get this fourth spot, so for that we'll see how it will go. I will do a bigger round of the whole thing tomorrow. That's at least in my plans. But yeah, uh, back to Liverpool. The game, it was not a super great game. Uh, Liverpool was controlling most of it. Uh, Cardiff is defending. I mean, that's what you would, would, would expect. I was more annoyed by uh, the missed chances that were happening. It was a huge one around the 20th by Firmino. Salah um, had a nice through ball, but uh, when you saw the replay, probably would not even hit the goal in the corner that he got out of it was the best. But then it was also a huge chance for Car Cardiff where Alisson really needed to stretch himself to not have the ball in goal. Early in the second half, after a corner kick, Wijnaldum makes it 1-0, then Liverpool should have made it 2, if not 3. I think Henderson especially missed a big chance. And then uh, the miss of the game uh, for Cardiff, where uh, after a corner kick, the uh, Cardiff player has a free header and it, it hits him here. I don't know how he dove with the head under the ball. That I saw in the internet how this didn't, it, it didn't go in is beyond me. And then, yeah, Liverpool actually being a little bit lax with their chances. In the end, it's a penalty. And I have to say, this was a clear, to me, it's a clear penalty. It was maybe not when you see it uh, in the game because of the position of the camera. You can see that Salah is trying to get uh, away. But when you see the replay, how the defender is basically hugging him and holding him back, restraining him, that's a foul. It's a penalty. And um, therefore, Milner, who came on for uh, Fabinho, who only was there for few minutes after he potentially got concussed. Um, yeah, slammed it home, make it 2-0. Mane could have made it 3-0 a little a little bit later, but I think he had even a bigger chance before. But Liverpool, yeah, takes the lead in the Premier League again, and on Wednesday we have the big uh, Manchester derby. That, yeah, could well decide the championship. Um, I saw that City, the run-in, has a few more away games. They only have one home game left. 
Uh, Liverpool has two home games. But I still think uh, the biggest chance for City dropping points was yesterday against Spurs, uh, where you had where they were really playing a good team. Um, United lost to the 4 0 at Everton, and it was a horrendous showing. I don't see United making anything against City, but then again, it's a, a local derby. You never know what's happening. Uh, I will hope just for a draw. Another big result was that Arsenal loses at home to Crystal Palace uh, 3-2. Haven't seen anything from that except for the result. Uh, yeah, Palace had a 1-0 lead, uh, uh, then a 3-1 lead. It ends 3-2, so Arsenal cannot overtake Spurs. Uh, which probably North London means a whole lot that even if it's Spurs losing, Arsenal also losing. So it remains level. Uh, and Chelsea is probably... Um, looking quite happy because now it's uh, Spurs 67, Arsenal 66 and Chelsea 66. One last note to Liverpool. Liverpool is having the best Premier League season ever already secured and it's not sure that they will win the title. This race is just mind-boggling to me uh, and they probably will, if they not become champions, they have only one loss at the moment. The seven draws are hindering them. I mean, City has one more win, but City can uh, afford uh, four losses because of that. It's just mind-boggling. Uh, it really reminds me of uh, some Barcelona-Real Madrid races that we had in the past. So yeah, then I watched also some highlights from uh, Germany where Dortmund gets uh, a 4-0 win at Freiburg. Reus uh, and Sancho really being in great form. I think Royce made a goal and assisted on two more. Let me just check on that. I think, yeah. He assisted the first one through Sancho, then uh, he made the third, the second, and he assisted the third again. The fourth was a Paco Alcas uh, penalty, so Royce had the big one. The result was probably a little bit too high, but, you know, it is well, well it is as also that... Um, there was the from yesterday the highlights between Gladbach and uh, Leipzig. The Leipzig actually made short shrift with Gladbach. Gladbach really not look low, looking well. I'm looking for. I'm actually curious how it will be when once Marco Rosa comes in there, who has been uh, nothing short but sensational with Schalke. If you want to see an interesting goal, um, the second goal of Espanyol against Levante uh, was one of those crazy shots. Uh, Real Madrid hat trick by Benzema. Uh, Gareth Bale may be missing a huge chance. And yeah, that's basically the action for today. Uh, let, let me know what you watched, what you thought about all the games that I've been talking about. Um, one that hurt me is that my team Lusk, despite leading twice in Vienna, only manages 2 to draw at Austria Vienna, which is hurting in the sense that they have not been winning uh, ever since the beginning of April. Um, that hurts, but in the table they are still very safe in a second spot. Uh, it is now only six points, it's not eight points any, anymore, but still it looks comfy in a way. And the teams below are not all that great either. Again, uh, let me know what you thought about the games, uh, this video, uh, what you were watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos of these and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.